Uh, this video, I'm going to show you an easy way using a 3D modeling program such as Autodesk Inventor to use a derive component function or command to uh, calculate the uh, or find the centers of gravity that you'll need uh, in order to uh, complete your boat design. Uh, the longitudinal center of gravity, transversal center of gravity, and also vertical center of gravity. What you see in front of you is an example of a boat. Now, uh, there's a couple of things you need to do before you get started. Number one, you have to model your boat in, a, in your modeling program full scale. So you see a full scale model of my boat. Also, when you model your boat, you want to pay particular attention to having your model began or constrained to the origin or x, y, z, all equals zero on your boat, which I've done now. In this year's competition, in the 2009 version, uh, they wanted uh, the uh, origin for you to start at the stern of the boat. So I haven't done that here. This is actually a model of a couple of years ago. Uh, in which we started the model construction with from the origin on the back of the boat. So uh, you can still find the centers of gravity just easy. Just know, understand what you're calculating and where it's coming from. Okay, so to give you an idea um, what the modeling program does, I'm using Inventor 11, and I'm going to select center of gravity from the view menu. Now what that does is it tells you the blue arrow is a z-axis, the y, I'm sorry, the green arrow is the y-axis and the red arrow is the x-axis. It gives the center of the gravity of the boat. It also gives you exact, if I can select other, right here, select other. As you see up on my screen, it gives you exact coordinates, x, y, and z coordinates uh, for that center of gravity. So this is obviously it gives you super hyper accurate uh, calculations for your center of gravity uh, to put in your spreadsheet for the competition. So this is a, an excellent tool to use if you have uh, students who are light on math and, and can't do it. Where this is especially useful is finding the center of gravity for curved sur surfaces such as what I have in the bow of the boat. It's, um, um, you know, you can find center of gravities pretty easily uh, using rectangular or um, surfaces such as what I have selected here. But it gets real tricky when you try to do, uh, and it gets very complicated when you try to find the centers of gravity of a curved surface. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, uh, and without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to create, an, I have to create a new part. And I'm going to do a standard part. And the next thing I'm going to do, I've got a little command here. It's called derive component. And I'm going to derive that component from my previous model that I showed you. And in here, that file is hall 5-2. That's what I have here. I'm going to go ahead and click open. And I'm deriving that component um, from uh, deriving that part from my old model. Now, right here is the derive part. Uh, dialog box. What I want to select, and this is very important, I'm going to select body as a work surface. Okay? And that's all I want. I do not want any of these others. Just want body as a work surface. And I'm going to click OK. And now I can select isometric view. And as you see, uh, what's happened here is I've created basically, I, I tell my students what they're doing is creating a phantom boat or their ghost ship. Uh, because this actually, even though it has work surfaces, it has no physical properties. So uh, it's not going to calculate any center of gravity until you give it some physical properties. And that's exactly what we want. So watch this. So I'm going to go up to thicken. I'm going to give calculate. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give one surface um, some physical properties. So I'm going to use the thicken or offset command. And I'm going to thicken this a distance. Uh, the sheet metal given is an eighth of an inch sheet metal is what we use in the competition. And I'm going to select my curved surface. And I'm going to click OK. And now basically what we've done is we've given just this surface uh, physical properties. And we can now go to view 
center of gravity and it's going to ask uh, Autodesk Inventor is going to um, say it's out of date. Would you like to update it? Click OK. And now look what happens. Is that sweet or what? Now your center of gravity appears right on that one piece. So basically what you've done is you've deleted all the other surfaces of the boat except for that one piece that you need to calculate the centers of gravity for in the spreadsheet. Um, of course, it's not in this video, but you have a spreadsheet that the competition uh, provides that you must enter. All right, now what we do now is just simply to get our values. I'm going to right mouse click select other on top of that. And I'm going to back it up till right there we go. I've got center of gravity. As you can see, my X value for this curved surface is 140.37 inches. Uh, y value 7.7 .7 inches. And my Z value is 12.35 inches. So my longitudinal center of gravity, which is my X axis or red axis, is going to be 140.37. Okay, and keep in mind that's going to be coming from the back end of the boat. And that would be the value that, would I, that I would put in my spreadsheet. All right, and for this curved surface. And, of course, my transversal center of gravity, which is my z-axis, or the blue arrow, uh, that one's going to be 12.35 inches. Now, this is the starboard side. So uh, that would be a negative value, a negative 12.35 um, would be what I put in the spreadsheet. Also, uh, my vertical center of gravity, it is 7.7 .7 inches, is my green arrow, so that's going to be my vertical center of gravity. And one last thing you need to know, um, I calculated this in inches. I've got my unit set up in my uh, um, program to set in inches. What you would have to do is, you, to get it in feet, in the spreadsheet they use feet as a unit, so you would either simply divide it by 12 in the spreadsheet, to get your answer for the value you put in the spreadsheet. Or you can simply change your units in your 3D modeling program uh, to measure this in feet. Uh, but hopefully you can see, you can do this for all the other um, plates. You can use the same derived part function to do all the individual plates. To, and in this manner, you can find super, like I said, super accurate uh, uh, calculations for your centers of gravity for your spreadsheet. Uh, hope this helps.